Hello and welcome to another Motion Industries how-to video. My name is Tom Clark, I'm your host, and on today's how-to, we're going to talk about Sprocketware. And helping us out is our special guest, Dave Simak. He is with U.S. Subaki, makers of roller chain, engineered chain, and also power transmission products. Am I right? You are correct. Awesome. Well, welcome, Dave. We're excited. Got some big sprockets here. I can't even move these guys here, man. What are we going to be doing today? Today, we're going to talk about the importance of measuring Sprocketware. And as it relates to new chain when you install it, it's mm -hmm. important to check sprockets for wear so you don't reduce the life of the chain. Okay, how do you want to start? Before we get started, I want to talk a little bit about the importance of measuring and checking sprocket wear when you're installing new chain. Typically in the industry, there, there's a couple issues that prevent people from changing sprockets. One is the cost of the sprocket. Mm -hmm. Two is the complexity of removing the sprocket. And three, the fact that there's little known standard for checking and measuring sprocket wear. There's not a lot of people that know how to do it. Um, so often sprockets are left in place far past their usable life. At the end of the day, when you leave a sprocket in that's worn past its usable life and you put new chain on it, you can greatly reduce the service life of the chain by almost up to 50%. Wow, that's, uh, that's a lot right there. So, all right, so how do you want to get started? What's the first thing we should do? Um, the first tool you're going to need is a caliper. And a caliper is used to measure the plate thickness at the root of the tooth. When we measured the sprocket, you know, you got to compare it to the nominal plate thickness. And the nominal pl plate thickness for this particular sprocket is 0.924 inches. Okay. So the minimum acceptable plate thickness is 0 0.908. This sprocket measured between 0.855 and 0.866 inches. Well, I, I don't doubt that. I mean, look at the wear. I Absolutely. Mean, that, that looks like it's ready to be thrown in the garbage. Absolutely. You can see the wear pockets here on the tooth. Mm -hmm. You can see that the tooth is deformed. The area of the tooth has been diminished. Um, this sprocket is done. It's past its usable life. Yeah, and when you compare it with a new one, this looks like it would seat good, looks nice, and this Looks, it's going to rattle. I mean, you could tell. I mean, it looks like a weird little wave in there. Yeah, th this particular sprocket's not going to retain the chain well, and it could result in the chain jumping or misalignment. So, Dave, what does U.S. Subaki come up with to, to take care of this so there's no mystery anymore? So, Subaki has developed a patented technology called wear indicator. And wear indicator technology is pretty simple. What we've done is we've inserted brass rods into the face of the tooth, mm -hmm. and you see the arrows below the brass rods themselves. As the sprocket wears, the tooth profile diminishes. So this brass rod will get closer and closer to the edge of the tooth. When it gets to the point where it's very close or it's protruding from the side of the tooth, you know it's time to replace the sprocket. Very smart, but extremely simple. As soon as you start to see that rod, it's it's time to move it's on time to replace, replace that. Yeah. Now, are there exceptions to the availability in which this technology can actually be applied? There are. Um, this technology is limited to sprockets with uh, pitch sizes greater than 100. Okay. That's for a roller chain. Uh, with engineered chain, it's two inch pitch and greater. So it wouldn't work on my 10 speed? No, absolutely not. All right. So implementing this type of technology makes sense for uh, businesses that rely on capital equipment um, which drives the livelihood of the business. So in the event that you have uh, capital equipment that cannot afford downtime, mm -hmm. uh, you would want to put this in. Easy to determine. You can just look at it, you can see it, and boom. Yep. That's pretty handy, though. That's, that's pretty smart right there. Are there any other tools or things we have to think about when we're checking sprockets? One should be familiar with the process of measuring chain elongation. Um, so you could use a tape measure, you could use a ruler for that. Uh, there's other ter certain tools that are available to do that, but you need to be familiar with that process. Secondly, you need to know when the sprockets were last replaced. Mm -hmm. So if you put new chain on worn sprockets six months ago, it's something you definitely want to keep an eye on. But optimally, the sprockets should be replaced with the chain as a given set. Dave, thanks so much. Thank you. All right, that's Appreciate Dave it. Simak with U.S. Subaki. And if you have any questions about anything you saw here today, contact your nearest Motion Industries branch location. Hopefully this will help you with your practical application. And when you're doing stuff like this, sprocket wear, chain elongation, anything, wear the proper PPE. If you don't know what it is, check with your supervisor because I'm sure they'll be able to tell you. Also, they'll be able to tell you that you should watch more Motion Industries how-to videos with me, Tom Clark, as your host. But thanks for watching today.